Hello and a very warm welcome to our Twinkle of Christmas Masterclass. I'm Claire German, Managing Director at Design Centre Chelsea Harbour. In this virtual format, we're keeping our community engaged and inspired wherever they are. We're bringing together the best in creative talent as they share insider knowledge, decorating secrets and tricks of the trade. Everything may be very different this year, but by the magic of technology, we're bringing the spirit of Christmas to your home. I'm delighted to introduce interior designer and stylist, Lucy Berridge, who has Christmas all wrapped up. Beaming in from her kitchen table, this session will put us in the festive mood with inspiration, ideas and top tips. Calligraphy is Lucy's lifelong hobby, so be amazed as she also shares ways to make presents really personal this year. Over to you, Lucy, and thank you so much for tuning in. Hello and welcome to my masterclass. My name is Lucy and I'd like to thank the Design Centre for hosting today's masterclass. And today we're going to have a little bit of festive fun and raise your game with your wrapping techniques. And this year I have chosen, because every year I choose a different theme, I have chosen this gorgeous marble paper and rather than wrap all the presents the same, I wanted to mix them up with some traditional tartan, a little bit of gold, tartan ribbon, plain ribbon, gold ribbon, and a mixture of thin and thick ribbon, so that the overall look is cohesive, but it's got lots of layers. So what do you need to get started? You need your paper, you need your ribbons, uh, we're not going to use sellotape that shows, but we do need some for discrete areas. We're going to use these transparent brown stickers um, and these gold ones. As this is my favourite paper this year, let's start with this one. So, the biggest mistake that everybody makes with wrapping is that they start with too big a piece of paper. And here's our gift. And what we're going to do to get the right size paper is we're going to lift up this edge so that it goes just off, just over halfway. And then the other side, if we do that, is going to come up to about there. And we're going to make a crease so we get a straight line. Just going to put this very coordinated paperweight down. This bit at the end can get chopped off. So there we have the right size piece of paper. Now to start with, I'll do it at this end so that you can see I'm going to make a fold here to make a nice clean edge. Then I'm going to turn the box upside down and that nice clean edge is going to go all the way over to the far edge of the box. Is that box in the middle? Yes. Lift up that far side and just check that all fits correctly. Now, here, I don't want to use sellotape because sellotape is ugly. So because it's on the edge, I'm going to use one of these transparent round stickers. Pull that paper towards me and turn it so you can see. And 
That makes a more professional finish than a scrappy old bit of sellotape. Now, turn the box upright onto its uh, correct side and we'll do the ends. So here we are. This end is coming down and I'm going to score along that point. I'm going to make sure that that paper gets to that point and I'm going to score along there. Then this floaty edge is the one I'm going to do first and I'm going to score that over and that as well and then I'm going to bring that one in and lift that up. Now, I'm going to make that neater by folding that up. And then on the sides here, I'm going to use a gold sticker. So, there we go. And then the other side. So, even though this isn't even, it doesn't matter because it all gets folded up. So I'm going to take my finger, put it right in the corner, I'm going to score down, finger in the corner, score the edge, moving this side across, keeping this nice and flat. So I've chosen this gorgeous silky taffeta tartan, which is a bit of a almost clash to to the Cosmos paper. Um, so first of all, I've got to sort of guess how much ribbon I'm going to need, and we are not going to do a four. We're only going to bring it over once. It doesn't need to have you know loads of stripes of ribbon. And then my guess is that I am going to need that much to tie my bow. I can always trim it. Bow tying. So get your, I'm going to do that so you can see it. Your present. Do your first knot. Actually make that nice and tight. Stick your finger in the middle, make your first loop. Now with your bow, it's better to do a small bow at the start, pull it back and then make it tighter and tease these uh, ribbon sides to get to the right position. Now for me, those tails are a little bit long, so I'm going to snip those and make them a little bit shorter. Here, and on the other side, just here. Bows need lots of teasing and reshaping, just a little bit of patience to tweak them. There you go. So now we're going to take your wrapping to a whole new level and do these little wax seals on the edges. A uh, little bit fiddly, but take the challenge. You can do it and I'm going to show you how. Now for the exciting bit. This is a stick of sealing wax and comes with its wick through the middle. And we're going to light a little candle over here. So we're going to light the wick and you've got to keep twisting it. So the wax drips slowly off the stick. And to 
help speed up the process, you can twist the stick. You've got to be patient here. This is a gorgeous colour and really rich for our Christmas theme. Make a, a circle with, with the wax that's dripping onto the paper. So just keep moving it around. I think we're almost ready to make our seal. That will do. I'm just going to give that a twist and pop that over there. I'm going to use this seal. I'm going to press down firmly. I love this bit when it all oozes out the sides. Hold that down to be a little bit patient. Here it comes. Ooh, that was a good one. Now, we can't do the other side until that one's dry. Now that I've done this lovely, very smart, sophisticated seal, I'm going to finish it off with a bow. And the bow that I'm going to use now is the Black Watch um, Tartan. And just like before, find the middle point. Do a nice tight knot. Stick your finger on there to hold the knot. And then remember, we're doing little ears to our bow to start with so that we can pull them out like so and then grab the ears of the bow and tease them into a nice shape and I think the oversized bow on a small present is a good look and I'm going to snip those a little bit because they're a tiny bit long here and the other one here here are the presents that we've wrapped and they're all complete and they're now ready for the tags. Now for the writing part. Modern calligraphy takes its foundations from traditional copper plate script. However, the rules are relaxed and it has a much more contemporary feel. You need a dipping pen, some calligraphy ink, maybe a bit of water, and some paper, and that's it. Guidelines are really useful, so you pop those under your practice paper, which is nice and thin so you can see your lines through your paper. To create the thick and the thin lines that, to form the letters is achieved by how much pressure you put on the nib. So pressure on the nib splits the nib, and no pressure, the line is thin. Thick and thin. Down strokes, down strokes um, have pressure and up strokes are lighter. In order to practice thin and thick strokes, you need to go through a whole series of drills which helps you understand how the nib and the ink flows. There are all sorts of lovely patterns to copy to help you with your thick and thin lines and to get a nice flow going. Once you've practiced your drills, move on to letters. And the letters have beautiful form and they are 
made up of thin and thick strokes. Lots of practice makes perfect, of course. Pressure, release the pressure. Pressure on the downstroke, lighter on the upstroke. Pressure to come down and gently off. So you can see that all these letters are made up of thin and thick lines. As you've practiced your letters, you can then move on to writing words and names and joining them up is fun. Once you've uh, achieved your, your words and your names, you can then add a bit of expression to your writing and free it up a bit. So you can uh, be bolder. Once you've got the hang of writing and you learn to relax a bit, you can have lots of fun and add your own individual style to your own calligraphy. It's quite nice to mix up the styles so you've got some ordinary letters with your fancy script. Add a bit of twinkle. Try not to smudge what you've done. There you go. Moving on from practice paper to the real thing. Here's the tag. And let's write the name in gold. With the gold ink, you need to slow right down. It comes off the, the nib quite slowly. Slightly raised. So our final part is we're going to tie our tag onto the very last present so it just goes through the hole in one simple knot, if I can do that, there we go, and I think it's quite cute if the, if the, if the gold is sticking up and has its own ta-ta, and there you are. So that's our last present finished, ready to join its friends here with our tartan, thick ribbons, thin ribbons, gold, um, green tags, all those colours mixed up together to create this lovely festive feeling. And that's it. Thank you very much for joining my masterclass. It's a wrap.